Insulin resistance is the thing that sits at the heart of metabolic syndrome. And if you have even the mildest interest in being healthy, you can't be insulin resistant. And I don't think that can be stated enough. So I'm going to say that again. If you have an interest in being healthy, you can't be insulin resistant. If you are insulin resistant, you're not going to be healthy. Now, there are different degrees of that, right? You could be mildly insulin resistant and you know, maybe it doesn't shorten your life by a decade. But if you're in the business of wanting to live the healthiest life you can live, which means longer and better, you've got to be insulin sensitive, full stop. And that's why we're going through this discussion. So let's talk about what insulin does at a more detailed level so that we can begin to talk about what goes wrong. So Bob, I'm, I'm kind of looking at our notes here and I'm looking at the picture on page 15 that we'll, we'll show po folks. This one's titled Normal Postprandial Response to Insulin. So you got a little person there, a little cartoon character, they're eating a nice piece of bread. So that piece of bread gets broken down into its constitutive starch molecules of which glucose is the main one. Glucose stimulates the pancreas to secrete insulin. Insulin does basically a couple of things. It tells the liver, hey, stop making glucose because if the liver was still making glucose, you would now have a very high level of blood glucose, which we never want. And it tells the muscle, take glucose in. The muscle is the predominant place where we dispose of glucose. So you'll hear me say this term, glucose disposal, glucose disposal all day long. It just means muscle taking in glucose. So what goes wrong here? And again, when I say wrong, I think it's important to understand this is a continuum that on one end of the spectrum is just becoming insulin resistant and at the other end of the spectrum is full-blown type 2 diabetes. So it's really everything we're talking about is just a gradation along a spectrum. So the first thing that really goes wrong here is the muscles take in less glucose. And by extension, the plasma insulin level has to rise to force that in. So the first sign of this is normal levels of glucose going in, but at a higher level of insulin. So that's easy to miss. So the first thing that usually shows up is higher levels of plasma glucose. And that's because the liver is becoming resistant to insulin, which means it's not slowing down glucose production. And therefore, in the presence of glucose, it's still making glucose, which is problematic. And also, at some point, there's not even enough insulin that the pancreas can make to overcome the resistance that we're about to dive into. And at some point, this becomes so bad that a person needs medication to start to overcome this problem. So... The first thing that I think is really worth getting super technical and nerdy on is the amazing work that Jerry and his team did to understand what it is about the muscle that fails in this process of glucose disposal. So in the podcast, he talked about there being basically three places that glucose could go, three fates of glucose within the muscle. The first is what we call oxidative. The second is glycolytic. And the third is glycogen. So let's take each of those in order. The oxidative fate of glucose says glucose comes into a muscle and immediately gets converted into ATP through the very efficient pathway of glucose being converted to pyruvate, pyruvate being converted to acetyl-CoA, and that going into the mitochondria where ATP is generated under something called oxidative phosphorylation. That's called the Krebs cycle. People may remember that from high school biology. And that's the most efficient way to generate ATP out of glucose. I don't even remember. I think each six carbon ring glucose will yield about a net of 34 ATPs going in that pathway. The second potential fate of glucose is to undergo glycolysis, which is you take the glucose down to pyruvate, 
but instead of taking the pyruvate towards the mitochondria and going through the Krebs cycle, you turn it into lactate, which yields much less ATP, and that lactate gets recycled and there's a whole bunch of other stuff there. So that would be the second fate. And then the third fate of glucose in muscle is it can be stored as glycogen. And I'll, I'll just pause for a moment to explain what glycogen is. Glycogen is literally a lattice of glucose. So glucose is a single six carbon ring, but you can join these things in rows and rows and rows and rows and sheets and sheets and sheets covalently. And that becomes a matrix of glucose, which is a very efficient way to store it. So again, there are three things that the muscle can do with glucose. We know at least one of them is not working. The question is which? This is where I think Jerry's work gets super interesting to me. Thank you for listening to today's sneak peek AMA episode of The Drive. If you're interested in hearing the complete version of this AMA, you'll want to become a member. We created the membership program to bring you more in-depth exclusive content without relying on paid ads. Membership benefits are many, and beyond the complete episodes of the AMA each month, they include the following. Ridiculously comprehensive podcast show notes that detail every topic, paper, person, and thing we discuss on each episode of The Drive. Access to our private podcast feed. The Qualies, which are a super short podcast, typically less than five minutes, released every Tuesday through Friday, which highlight the best questions, topics, and tactics discussed on previous episodes of The Drive. This is particularly important for those of you who haven't heard all of the back episodes. It becomes a great way to go back and filter and decide which ones you want to listen to in detail. Really steep discount codes for products I use and believe in, but for which I don't get paid to endorse and benefits that we continue to add over time. If you want to learn more and access these member-only benefits, head over to peteratiamd.com forward slash subscribe. Lastly, if you're already a member, but you're hearing this, it means you haven't downloaded our member-only podcast feed where you can get the full access to the AMA and you don't have to listen to this. You can download that at peteratiamd.com forward slash members. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all with the ID Peter Atia MD. You can also leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcast player you listen on. This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com forward slash about, where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies. Mm -hmm.